Okay, so we want to graph um, a rational function, and we don't want to use our graphing calculator to do this. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to factor the bottom to see if there is anything that we can cross out for point discontinuity. So when we factor the bottom, we're looking for two numbers that when we multiply, we get negative 3, and when we add, we get negative 2. Those two numbers are negative 3 and negative 1, so we're going to put them right here. The top is going to say x minus 3. So when you do that, you notice that you have a common factor on the top and bottom. You have x minus 3 on the top and bottom. So you're going to go ahead and cross those out, and then you're going to write what you have left over, which in this case will be 1 over x minus 1. Okay. Now, since you cross that out, you're going to go ahead and fill in your point discontinuity. So that's your first item that you're going to find is point discontinuity. And we already said that we crossed out x minus 3, so our x value is going to be 3. We're now going to plug that back in to what we have left over in order to find what the y value is. So if I substitute in 3 for x, I get 1 over 3, I'm sorry, that should be a plus 1, um, 1 over 3 plus 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4, so you have 1 fourth. So your point of discontinuity is 3 comma 1 fourth. So you're going to go ahead and graph that on your coordinate plane with an open circle, which is going to be about right there. Now, um, you're going to want to also write this point discontinuity in limit statements. So if I do that, it's going to be the limit as x approaches the, y, the x value of 3. Your function is going to reach the y value of 1 fourth. So same thing as, sorry, for this would be from the right, and also from the left, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, the function is still going to approach the y value of 1 fourth. Okay? Now you can look at the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. For the vertical asymptotes, that's going to be when the bottom is going to give you 0. So if I put a 3 in here, it's going to give me 0. So that's one vertical asymptote. My other vertical asymptote is when x equals negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, you know what, we should not use those. We're only going to want to use the one that's left over because we crossed out the x minus 3 already. That was the point discontinuity. So we're only going to actually use the vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that on my coordinate plane. Here's my vertical asymptote. Okay, there's x equals one, negative 1. Okay, so so far I have a point discontinuity of vertical asymptote. Again, writing this in terms of limits will give you the limit as x approaches negative 1, the function approaches positive or negative infinity, and then the limit as x approaches negative 1, again, this is from the right and this is from the left, we'll see how this function behaves in just a second. Okay, so we'll come back and we'll fill those in. The horizontal asymptote is when um, you're going to look at whether it's top heavy, bottom heavy, or equal. And in this case, since you have x to the power of 1 and you have an x to the power of 2, the power of 2 is higher, so I call this bottom heavy. And when I have that characteristic, then my horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. And basically, horizontal asymptote are your end behaviors. So this is always the limit as x approaches positive and negative infinity. Positive infinity and negative infinity, it always goes to the horizontal asymptote value. So the function goes to 0, and also the function here will go to 0. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and sketch in this graph. So my horizontal asymptote was 0. So that's right along the axis, the x-axis, which is right here. y equals 0. And as you can see, I do have also um, a point up here, so it's probably going to be a graph up here. But let's go ahead and get the y-intercept and the x-intercept before we do anything else. So the y-intercept is going to be when x is 0. So when x is 0, if I plug in a 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, so 1 over 1 is 1. So my y-intercept is over 0 of so that's going to be a point right here. All right, so as you can see, now when I do my sign analysis, here's my sign analysis right here. Okay, I'm going to use my vertical asymptote of negative 1, and then do I have any x-intercepts? Well, the x-intercept is when y is 0. So basically, if I were to plug in 0 equals 1 over x plus 1, 
0 times x plus 1 is just 0. So does 0 equal 1? No, it does not. So therefore, I have none. I have no x-intercepts. So really, I'm just looking at two sides of the graph. So if I pick a value like negative 10, that's on the left side of negative 1, and I plug in 1 over negative 10 plus 1, that's going to give me a negative number. So therefore, I know my graph lays below, and since I have two asymptotes, I know it's going to be sketched along those asymptotes looking something like that. Okay. Now for my other side, this side is going to be positive, and I know that because I already have points that are above there, and since I have my two asymptotes, I know the graph is going to look something like that. Okay, now as far as my domain and range are concerned, I have three things I need to take into, con or two things really. I have a vertical asymptote and I have a point of discontinuity when I'm looking at my domain. So from left to right, I'm going to start at negative infinity. And then I'm going to go up to my, my first asymptote of negative 1. Okay. Now, I don't know why my board's doing that. Sorry, negative 1. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add in another interval. So now I'm going to go from negative 1 up to my point of discontinuity, which is at 3. And then I'm going to do union with my point of discontinuity all the way to infinity. My range, I have to do the same thing, but this time I have a horizontal asymptote and a point of discontinuity. So I start at negative infinity, and I'm going to go up to my asymptote of 0. Then I'm going to go from 0 to my point of discontinuity, which is just basically 1 fourth. And then I'm going to go from 1 fourth all the way up to infinity. Okay. My increasing intervals are basically where from left to right I go up. But if you notice, I go down, and from left to right I go down. So therefore I have no increasing intervals. That means my decreasing intervals are basically my entire domain. So you're just going to basically recopy those intervals over here to your decreasing intervals. Okay. My symmetry, I don't have any symmetry, so I say none. And it is unbounded. Okay, now going back to fill in my vertical asymptotes, as I approach my vertical asymptote of 1 from the right, the graph is going to infinity. And as I approach negative 1 from the left, it's going down to negative infinity. So now I have my limit statements, my intercepts, and again, my sign analysis, if I were to pick a value, it would be positive.